So my name's Adrian Richards, I'm a plastic surgeon, I'm also the clinical director of cosmetic courses. And in this pod, I'm going to be taking you over the anatomy, the skeletal anatomy of the bony uh, skeleton. Now we have much more in depth uh, information on the bony skeleton in other courses, but this is really an overview. So we've got our skeleton here. So if we just focus on our skeleton, I'm going to be working from different angles and from the top uh, to the bottom. So it's important to remember that the skull is made up of lots of different bones and the bones are joined together by sutures. So where the bones join together is a suture. So I'm just going to quickly run through the bones for you. So this bone in the front is called the frontal bone um, um, and the coronal suture is this suture uh, that runs all the way along here and that's the back of the frontal bone. Frontal bone is slightly different. Um, in uh, males and females. Males tend to have uh, slightly larger sinus ridges here and a, a forehead, a frontal bone that's more tilted back, whereas female skulls tend to have a more upright um, frontal bone. And from the, um, my analysis of this skull, this is a male skull with larger um, sinuses here and a more rotated back frontal bone. We have the supraorbital foramens here, um, where the supraorbital nerve uh, exits the uh, skull. Next bones are the paired nasal bones here. So these are just two small nasal bones on either side. The nose is divided into three parts, the upper part, middle part, and lower part. And the lower two parts are made up of cartilage. The upper part is the only part that is made up of bone, and we have two nasal bones here. This hole here is called the piriform aperture, and that's essentially the, the bony uh, base on which the nose um, sits. So let's just look at the bony aperture of the uh, orbit. Well, the bony aperture is made up of uh, essentially three bones. So the frontal bone to the top till here, which is about sort of two, two o'clock. And um, then we've got the zygoma uh, here, which goes from approximately two o'clock to perhaps six o'clock, and then we have the um, maxilla uh, here. So those are the three bones which make up the bony orbit. If we look right at the back of the orbit, we have two fissures. So we have the supraorbital fissure and the infraorbital fissure. And these are almost like Vs. So Vs centered medially going out um, up, um, superior laterally and inferior laterally. And these are the fissures where all the uh, nerves and vessels uh, pass through uh, back into the brain. We also have the orbital foramen where the orbital nerve uh, passes uh, from the eye back to the brain. And obviously it's the orbital nerve which takes the sensations of vision um, back to the brain so it can be processed. So the orbit essentially has three boundaries. It has the frontal bone in the top, it has the zygoma uh, laterally and inferiorly, and it has the maxilla inferiorly and medially. So the teeth uh, are inset into the maxilla in the, uh, in the upper teeth and the lower teeth are set into the mandible. So let's have a look at the mandible. Well the mandible is this uh, uh, bone uh, here um, and we have the body of the mandible here, uh, we have the angle of the mandible uh, here and then this area here is called the ramus of the uh, mandible and then we have two processes is coming up here. This posterior one is called the condylar process and this one here is called the coronoid process. So the condylar process sits here into the temporal bone and that's called the TMJ joint, the temporomandibular joint. And that's the uh, joint where the mandible rotates uh, around and is lined by articular cartilage. This is the coronoid process uh, which is anterior to the condylar process and this is used primarily for muscle attachment. Can you see that it's sort of wide and flat? So the muscles come through here, attach to the coronoid process, and these are the muscles, the sort of clenching together uh, muscles, the teeth grinding muscles. So coronoid is essentially a muscle attachment process, whereas uh, the condyla is for articulation. So moving on uh, around, this uh, bone is called the temporal bone, okay, because it's in the temple. Um, and this bone here, you think you can just see, is the sphenoid. So this is the, called the greater wing of the sphenoid. So the sphenoid is really based uh, in here. This is the, called the greater wing. So the greater wing of the sphenoid um, is adjacent to the frontal bone here, 
okay, the temporal bone here and the parietal bone here. This big bone here is called the parietal bone. So just run through that again. Frontal, temporal, parietal, uh, zygomatic, maxilla, mandible. Okay, so each of these bones between them have um, sutures. And um, in some conditions in children, these sutures fuse too early, and this can give uh, abnormal shapes to the skull. So this suture here is called the coronal suture. So the coronal suture is between the frontal bone okay, and the parietal bone. Okay? This suture here is called the sagittal suture, and that lies between the two parietal bones. This suture on the back is called the lambdoid suture, and that lies between the uh, parietal bones and the occipital bone at the back. So essentially we can go into lots more detail on the uh, anatomy of the skull, but that's really an overview. If you would like more information, please feel free to contact us.